year this is. <laughs> um, the last one that you had. The last one we had. I forget what year it was. 1986 or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he, he sang, um, oh, fuck. A CCR tune with us. I can't remember which one. Um, oh, yeah, Down in the Corner or something. I think he knows like a thousand songs, so. I would imagine he does. So give me one second here, just do a quick little we, sound we, test here, guys. Sure. I don't wanna... Yeah, we've done uh, Zoom calls before, but this is the first time where we're gonna try and do a couple more ad like videos and stuff. So we're just gonna. A Christmas Carol. He's our he's our, our our friends the bomb solid here as an example. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, because we. Uh, I don't know if you did. Did you check out the the whole the whole episode with Scott? I think uh, I listened to pretty much all of it. Okay, so you know our that's how kind of the format we like to go is we like to interview and then play songs through okay. your through your catalog. Okay, and, and this is the first time we're kind of doing it through Zoom, so I kind of was hoping to. Oops, didn't, I'm not going to try to hit that too much. Is play some of the videos that you guys have some of the Stanfield sure. videos. Yeah. Uh, um, and then we could just, we don't have to play the whole thing, but just. Yeah, we whatever could. works, man. Yeah, and then, and then I don't know if you're because I never even talked to you about it, but sometimes we do a little get live performances from people. I don't know if you have a guitar there or a good setup. I, or anything. I actually just took all my shit over to. I, I got a session this weekend, so all my shits out of the apartment. All right. Well, then we'll just go through the videos, uh, the Stanfield videos. There's you guys got a lot of good ones there, anyway. That's for sure. I'm right on the YouTube page now as well. Um, so, if you want to just give us a couple of seconds of silence, here, buddy, I'll uh, bring in the, the the intro and we'll get this thing on the road. So, I guess we're going with the same intro this this season, are we? Yeah. Yeah, we are. All right. Season two. Season. To Michael, look, look at us. Yeah, we've, we've we kept been... going. We, we we took our little break and we and we came back and we saw you guys some more. So thanks for all the extra downloads uh, while we were doing nothing. Yes, uh, thank you. You know that's that's really important uh, that you keep that uh, keep that alive well, for us uh, because we're now back. We're here in season two. We've got all kinds of cool stuff going on. We got Twitter now. We've got Patreon. We've got our own fucking website. Yeah, we got Hello, our own website. Big shout out to Ryan Hayden, uh, our own little webmaster, but Dunch uh, for making that happen and teaching me how to use WordPress. Super cool. So we've got all kinds of really cool stuff happening uh, here at uh, the Jam Sessions Studios. Uh, hell, we're even in a whole brand new studio, aren't we, Mike? Yeah. The this is the new studio with uh with in your home now, Jeff. Yeah, we're in my house, so so it's a lot less pressure for me. I just uh, get off of work. I work from home, so I just kind of get off yeah. of work and just here I am. Your shift like half an hour ago. Yeah, it was pretty nuts actually. So uh, <laughs> we're here. We are loud. We are not so live, but we are definitely recording. Uh, I'd like to uh, introduce our guest this evening, the front man to one of, well, I'm going to say it, one of my favorite bands. I've never had a bad time visit, seeing these guys play live. Uh, it's always just a, a hoot nanny, as my grandmother <laughs> used to say. Ladies and gentlemen. John Landry from the Stanfields. Howdy. How's it going? It goes well, my friend. Thank you so much for joining yeah. us here. Good to see you guys. Welcome to the show. Pleased to be here. I'm, I, I'm, uh, I've been waiting to be asked. Oh, well, <laughs> I asked you back in September when I looked, uh, looked there. <laughs> and uh, we weren't really, we were kind of just getting started them days. I think maybe it's better that you came on now anyway, now that we got uh, a little bit more uh, fancy resume. Stuff. Yeah, I've got uh, fancy stuff going on, our little green backdrop. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, I feel if I showed you my backdrop, you'd see a like a, a stained box spring against the wall. <laughs> Horrible. Two artist style, right on. So I'm trying to think. The last time we had a conversation, me and you, was it high school? I was going to say that this is how you guys know each other, is it not? You guys uh, maybe attended some classes together, maybe skipped some classes together. Honestly, yeah, probably yeah. high school, Mike. Honestly, I think so. Uh, what what year did you graduate? Uh, Ninety eight. Same so here. Five, year, five years ago, yeah. right? 
So, <laughs> again, yeah, yeah, 98. NGHS. I, so, where were those? We're actually graduating the same year. I didn't even realize that. That's how much you paid attention. That's uh, well done. <laughs> well, I was supposed to graduate in 96, but. I still graduated. That's right. And that's, uh, that's kind of the, my message to anybody that's out there struggling in school is to just keep at her. Uh, you will get through it, kiddies. My, my dad, my dad uh, failed grade nine three times. So he, he thinks that equals 12. He's got a high school diploma in, in, in his mind. And I don't know, at the end of the day, he, he makes way more money than I do. So I, who's laughing, right? <laughs> yeah, I wish I, if I could teach one thing to my younger self, it would be like, but don't even worry about that too much. Yep. But I still got it anyway. Kind of had yeah. that conversation with one of my, uh, with one of my kids today about, uh, you know, things that are going on in, in high school right now will not matter in two years. They won't matter in six months. Yeah, but good luck trying to tell that to the my younger self uh, <laughs> yeah, right. having him listen. <laughs> so listen, John, I want to take it back, uh, way back to the nineties. Um, I, I don't want to, to j jump the gun here a little bit, but I do want to kind of get a feeling man for who you are. I mean, I know you as the guy on stage. I don't think you and I have ever actually met in life, maybe in passing because we, we have such similar circles. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, where did you get your, where, where did you cut your teeth on music? Where did you fall in love with performing? And kind of, I guess my biggest question here, John, is how did you get your start, man? Yeah, I, I, I come from a musical family right at the get go. So I, I was humping gear, uh, with my cousin, Jason, who used to be in the Stanfields, uh, Jason Wright, he played the bazooki. So he's my first cousin. We grew up together and we were humping uh, his father was a his father and mother played in 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 country bands around Guysburg County where I was born so you know every Sunday morning we'd be humping in you know like <laughs> just piles of gear shit like that so that was pretty early on we were doing the uh probably the biggest part of the job of being a musician is actually carrying gear yeah. <laughs> you know honestly so, uh, was so fit, I, was, right? I was immersed in it pretty early um my cousin and i were we were making up albums on paper without music from when we were like eight you know like just the dumbest song titles in the world and yeah uh, but wicked all the same right Those well I, I i probably you know there are probably a few hits in there i guess but uh, um so when yeah. did you move to glasgow That's what's that what my question is when did you move to glasgow because i know you weren't always from the like you grew up in Guysboro, you said right well i was born in Guysboro, and i and you know those those formative childhood years i spent there like you know from ages zero to to 11 right and and i didn't play music i, I kind of it wasn't really my thing but i was immersed in it i was always around it and and uh, it wasn't actually until uh, we moved to to stellarton i, I moved to stellarton i lived there right until okay. i was 18. And, and it, but I went to Nebraska High School. I remember you being in the school band, the guitar player for the school band. Am I not correct on that? That's, that's very correct. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's actually, it's actually the reason I went to New Glasgow High School. Um, I went to Stellarton, and, and when I was about 14 years old, you know, high school is, a, you know, you were mentioning earlier, it's, it's one of those times where <laughs> everything that is stupid matters in the world. And, and uh, you know, myself, I wasn't very much of a, uh, I, I didn't have a lot of self-esteem, a lot of self-confidence when, when I was younger, you know. So, like, I, I luckily found the guitar. You know, I picked up my mom's nylon string guitar. She taught me how to play Nothing Else Matters right off the get-go when I wrote my first song, ripping off those chords, you know, <laughs> that sort of shit. And, you know, I had some friends in Stellarson who I, uh, you know, we uh, we learned to play. We learned to play every Nirvana song that we could, and and uh, I took an interest in the guitar. And and my mom um, thought I might want to go to take music classes, and they didn't have it in Stellarton, so I went to Nevada School. Yeah, Nevada School did have the best music program of all the schools back in the nineties, and still do. Um, you know, guys like uh, Stephen, uh, the music teacher there now, he's doing the, he's doing the good work man uh the the, the music uh that's, that's still coming out of those of those halls and those walls is, yeah 
is still a very magical thing then so you can you can know that the that, that the future is, is bright when it comes to music at uh, at nga for sure yeah i i, I think that's i think they actually have recording studios in there and stuff don't they well yeah. for the most part i mean the, the You'd be surprised, brother, if you come to New Glasgow again and take a, a walk through those halls. It does not look like your old NGA let me, or NGHS. I'll tell you what. Um, but the, well, the building's the, still standing. Say again, sorry. The building's still standing. Some of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't hundred percent sure. I, I I knew they opened up the new schools, and I guess that's what I was more referring to with the. They had recording studios and stuff. Anyway, it was you know in Glasgow, that was that was quite a change from Stellard and Stellard and kind of was a little more of a jockey kind of uh, town mm -hmm. as opposed to Glasgow. Like it's really crazy. Like Pictou County in itself is so identifiable by town and sometimes by street, you know. And <laughs> yeah. and, and um, you know it was it was a it was a marked difference to go from Stellarton, which was a bit more, you know jockey's not a fair word but you know it was a little it was a little more mainstream so to speak to come to glasgow and all of a sudden it was like hey there's like mike hatfield and the lesbians bleeding all over microphones on the stage <laughs> and shit you know and that's like it was just like whoa what is happening here and then the whole trenton youth center scene and everything like you know it was it was like a culture shock in a way it you know? really would have been it was a subculture really i mean uh, what yeah. we're doing here i think is uh, something special for sure and i mean we've had you know many many episodes in season one to talk about it so can i i think that was a perfect segue john so uh you know, you, you, there's your first gold star being a great guest uh, yeah. you're, you're doing your own segues what do you remember the trenton youth center days man work what was kind of maybe some highlights or even lowlights that you remember Oh boy. Um, I remember soup playing there yeah, and soup was like, like when, when you're a teenager playing in a band and you know, the same drummers in like six bands and you're putting together, cobbling together gear. And then all of a sudden these guys roll in, uh, from Port Hawkesbury and they get all the gear and they're tight you know like they're a tight yeah. band they're like a real band you're like what the fuck is this i don't Just know how we, we me and jeff went down and interviewed them they're one of our episodes yeah oh yeah no shit eh? yeah. uh episode jeez oh, i want to see i don't even know was it up that high i don't know well it's it's in there anyway but uh yeah we get the bass player and uh, the bass player singer. and then we did a yeah. call in with uh yeah the singer can you did a call in so we get two of the four so yeah definitely mm -hmm. check that out didn't uh, want to see them uh, start Grand Theft Bus out of New Brunswick. Do you, you, you know? Oh, about oh, the drummer is yeah, and it, yes, but I don't think you're saying the band. That's a different. I don't think that's the right name. <laughs> but it's a band, and like, Are you so, sure? Some, maybe it might be. Maybe it, it is. is Grand Theft Bus. Is it? It might be. Maybe I don't. Maybe I, I. I want to say that that conversation or that that name came up when we were having uh, our chat with right. Stephen. I just so, thought yeah. Was, okay, yeah. Another gold star, yeah, buddy. The, yeah, the drummer is still still active in a band and maybe that is correct yeah. and uh the, actually the guitar player we didn't talk to him but he what he is still making music mm -hmm. uh doing like cool. a one-man band type of thing oh yeah uh, speaking of actually we, we do this little thing i'm gonna do it early our segues are on fire tonight ladies uh, <laughs> Holy shit. You, you know andrew spicer, is, here, boys. andrew spicer is the one-man rock band Andrew Spicer, one man rock band. Mm -hmm. That is like all kinds of bells are ringing. He's from Picto here. He's from Picto. He uh, he wrote. We have uh, fans ask questions, and he wrote in a question, and I'm just gonna read it the way he wrote it. Okay. Uh, he says, "I don't have a specific question, but I would be interested to hear more about his old '90s band, Blemish. I first heard of them at Lori Park back in '98, '99." sometime and it made me want to be a live musician so you inspired him to be a live musician and he's actually does a pretty cool live act actually he says he still has your demos from their their old website called songs like mirrors and not your enemy and he says actually i do have a question will we have <laughs> any release of any more blemish stuff officially there must be more recordings Jesus. Uh, <laughs> wow. Okay. 
That's a lot of information to unpack there. So you take your time. We're going we're gonna to have to take a minute here. Um, I'm going to just take a draw on my douche flute here. And, and, and Andrew was a uh, whatever. For, here was our third episode, episode three, I think. Spicer was that early on? Yes. Two so they, all, they all run together for me now. It's wild. Yeah, no. Uh, so uh, he's a. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. No quantity. Uh, jeepers. Yeah, so. I, I mentioned Jason Wright earlier, my cousin, and, and he played in the Stanfields with me for, Jesus, seven or eight years. And, uh, he was a drummer of the band. Um, he moved to New Glasgow. He, like, dropped out of St. of X jazz program playing saxophone and decided he was going <laughs> <he was, laughs> to play drums, move into my garage and play drums with me. And uh, so we we found a bass player in Stellarton that, uh, his name's Mike Bigelow, and you might know him from Winterson. I haven't heard that name in a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's actually living around the county again. Um, oh, really? Thank yeah. you for the tip. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Where in the world's Carmen San Diego? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the three of us had this band, and 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 you know we were really into, honestly, just sort of jamming out blues rock. <laughs> you know, really as, cool. as much as anything, and we spent a lot of time you know playing in the key of e on Jimi hendrix <laughs> tunes and and uh you know getting really high and and breaking our gear like we were nirvana or something you know in this garage and you know it was it was an awful lot of fun and learned an awful lot and started dabbling i bought a four track fostex oh, uh, wow. yeah you know and uh and started recording some of our songs and and uh, he mentioned jesus <laughs> I, I didn't even give him a second thought until you know uh well, not for a little bit anyway so that's that's i'm, I'm quite impressed Need, needless to say i'd actually i think he should probably send me some copies of them because uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll mention that to him yeah we'll sure. definitely he's make probably, sure that he knows he'll yeah. be listening as well um, actually i did forget something i, I turned 40 uh, last february and um my mom she gave me a gift and she actually held on to the master tapes of some of those old songs from the old fostex machine she still had them see what you used to do back in the day to register copyright was you <laughs> mail it would, to yourself you'd mail it to yourself and register yes. <laughs> so, so we did and she held on to them so when when we had 40th birthday my wife threw it a 40th a surprise 40th birthday and, and mom gave me these gifts and i'm like what are these and i my jaw hit the floor and oh my god you know, so so i am i i am omitting that little bit but i, I hadn't really thought about it again since then and, and to even think that you know somebody would that you know a little gig at lori park and you're sweating through your v-neck you know and have any sort of any sort of effect on anybody but you know I, i'm that's that's really touching and and uh, i'm really honored andrew that you uh that you uh, thought fit to mention that. That's great. That's awesome. Um, I mean, he he listens to every episode of the show, so he'll definitely uh, be tuning in to hear that uh, personally. But we'll we'll also uh, extend that invite to uh, have him send you those demos for sure, buddy. So was Blemish like kind of like your first real band then? Jeez, uh, um, I think it's probably the first band that ever played in a bar. So you know, if you're going to go with that sort of standard, then yes, you know, like. God, it was in a band with um, Mike McDougal and Fear and those guys. Oh, no, oh, yeah. Fear. I don't think I was in a band with Fear, but... What was, was that called? Blah. We were in a band called Benson. Oh, um, okay. That band was was probably the greatest thing that ever happened to music. <laughs> 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 but you know what? Like, it's it's all exploratory. I mean, I, I had all kinds of little pickup bands through high school. My very, very first band was... I, I changed the name like five times, and one of the names I remember is Hybrid. We didn't have a drummer. Uh, yeah, we were I was, trying, I was trying to remember like what band you were in, and the only thing I could think of was you be always being the guitar player for the music band. Yeah, and I didn't really remember any like any of your bands. But well, well, honestly, I didn't really like. You know, I I, I really went through high school, and particularly like in, in New Glasgow, just being a bit of an observer right? Like it was more of an observational thing for me. Like I, I didn't really want to play out too much. I just, but I, like, I had respect for, cause you know, to be in the music, like you still could have to have talent to play, especially to play actually a lot of talent to be in the music band. 
and I don't know. I noticed anyway. Huh. Well, that's cool. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know what? Like, I to this day, I I I couldn't read a chart in front of me if I if I uh, wanted to. Like, somebody mm -hmm. throw music in front of me, I I wouldn't know how to read it. You, you can't. Know? You okay? Wait, wait. <laughs> I'm choking on this, bro. <laughs> I really look up to the Stanfields and I hold you guys in very high regard uh, in the, the upper echelons of the, the royalty of Nova Scotian musicians. Uh, and bro's telling me you can't read music. Not really. Like that makes me as, as, as also a lead singer. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, don't like, I play guitar and, th and, and I've got a piano sitting right here beside me. I figured you'd be in a music class. I definitely, I can't read music, but, so is it more of a feel thing for you as well, John? Well, I, I, uh, I don't, I don't know how to compare it. I think, I think a lot of musicians are the same, are the same, to be honest with you. Like when, when you look at like old country, like you look at country music, for example, you know, there were, there were guys in the fifties and sixties and even in the seventies, even still to this day, like they didn't know how to read music, but they were cutting five, six tracks a day. Right. You know? yeah. And, and there's what's called the Nashville, uh, chord system so it'll be one two three four five six seven eight right and and basically you just learn a little bit of theory by repetition by banging your head against the wall a lot you know and 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 really like that's that's how i learn i mean it's a lot of feel i have i have some fundamentals down in terms right. of theory but man like i have to right you know, well yeah at, at this point especially in my career <laughs> like you know i i, I uh, i'm a semi-professional musician if you want to call it that. i'm a music professional and uh you know at this point i i have to be boned up somewhat but uh you know somebody throw sheet music in front of me it, i might as well be looking at uh greek <laughs> wicked so listen i want to i want to share my screen with you for a second and uh i want to get uh get your feelings on <laughs> on how you're <laughs> this photograph okay here we go can you can you see my screen oh shit can you tell me how you're feeling in this photo um i'm just trying to remember what this was so i'm i'm exhausted i can tell you that much <laughs> i know who that other person so, is so you know who this fella is here in the photo. yeah that's nathan that's yeah, nathan mr. man mr man nathan man yeah I'm not sure who this is behind you guys, so but maybe the Heartbreak sure. Hotel. Maybe. That, inside the Heartbreak Hotel there. No, this is actually at uh, Coda Pop Studios. Oh, uh, heard my Coda, ignorance. Coda Pop Studios in Halifax. I did a lot of work out of there um, over the last five to six years. Um, it's closing up now, but uh, that guy was uh, Arian. Uh, his name's Arian. Uh, his last name's escaping me right at the moment, but. Uh, he was the engineer there for a time, and and I was in there producing a record by a band called the Stogies. Yeah, so that's exactly what I was just about to lead into, uh, as you can see here. Um, <laughs> stop the share, actually, because that's uh, that's the things. But uh, Stogies Hoot uh, was uh, something that you were were. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? I don't want to play somebody else's music on the show without their consent, but uh, can you maybe tell us a little bit about the Stooges? Oh, um, I, I think they'd be fine with it. Um, I actually shouldn't speak for them, but I think they'd be okay with it. Um, uh, yeah, that was actually, God, I think that was my first full-length production I'd ever done. Awesome. Uh, at that point, and, and really it was sort of by necessity, um, I had been on the road with the stands for jeepers, a couple months in Europe. It was nuts, right? And, mm -hmm. and really the, the thing is, you know, there's a sort of mythos around being in a band and then being signed to a label and all of a sudden everything's hunky-dory. Well, it's not true. It gets a hundred times worse. hundred times harder. That's it. This is, well, I, I've, I have never had the... Um, the, the benefit of having that success. I'm working and grinding with my, the band now, but uh, this is anything that I've ever heard from any of my successful friends that are doing good uh, in the industry is that just exactly the same words that you just said, man. Once you get signed, it's just, it gets worse. Yeah, and there's more hands in the pie and, and there's and there's less money uh, in, in a lot of cases. So, you know, I'd come off this tour um, or as in between tours anyway, and it's the sort of thing like, it's like I need to I need to keep the lights on, you know. And and what did I learn? So I'd 
I had done a few records and, and I just somewhat at that point had come out of done doing a record with Mike Fraser, who um, engineered the last 10 ACDC records or something. Yeah. So, That's yeah. that got a resume and a half. What? Yeah. Right. So like I, I learned, I learned a few tricks from him and, and I had a little bit of cachet because the band was doing pretty good at the time. And, and, uh, and I just thought, hell, I'll, I'll try it out. And, and I produced this record. Um, I, I'm kind of embarrassed looking back on it because, you know, I, I, I know, I know a 10th of what I know now about the process, but, uh, you know, it, it turned out really well. And, and, uh, the band is a fantastic band. Well, they, they were, they're not together anymore, but, uh, it, Blake Johnson and, and probably one of the best guitar players I've ever heard in my life, you know, they're just shredders, man. Wicked. Nice. Wicked. So, so we're, l let's start. Let's ask the the question: How did you end up where and who you are today? Is the the lead singer of the Stanfields? Yeah, I believe it's two thousand eight is what I read. Is when it started. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. We 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 say two thousand and eight. I think that's right. <laughs> to be, to be honest with you, like we we had a band. Prior, prior to the Stanfields called Folds of Policy. Folds it, of Policy? Yeah, just to find man. that somewhere. No, okay. don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, it, it was just sort of, I don't know, I discovered the Springsteen record, Seeger Sessions and Seeger Sessions record, and it's really folksy kind of barbecue music. And, you know, I, I just wore it out and I just loved it. And it really kind of, connect me with the music I heard when I was a kid in Guysboro, you know, like a lot of country and folk music and, and, you know, working the stage hung over at Stanfest and, you know, shit like this. And it really just kind of brought it all home for me. And uh, it got me on this path of, of uh, trying to connect sort of ear bleeding level volume and shit like that with, you know, folk music and, you know, Man. Did you started shortly after that? So you did a good job, I'll tell you that. Yeah, no kidding. So, guys, I just wanted to make a quick little uh, production note for all three of us here. Uh, because I don't have a premium version of Zoom, this meeting is going to shut itself down at forty minutes. So, mm -hmm. uh, what I'll do then, uh, John, is I'll just uh, get Mike to send you another invite, and then we'll just get sure. you on it, and we'll just pick up right where we left off. Yeah. Great. Come on, talk to me for that long. I'm, 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 I'm pumped. Yeah. Yeah. This is going. Quick, we did. We're just starting to talk about Stanfields now, and we've already talked. We're already forty minutes in now. <laughs> we're, we're, we're professional <laughs> podcasters now, right? Uh, so to kind of follow up with uh, with that question, uh, we do have another mailbag question from the uh, ever lovely uh, Jen Hickey, my girlfriend. Her question to you, John, was, and and it super duper ties into the, where we're at in the conversation right now. Mm -hmm. Was there a moment where you thought? holy shit this is really going somewhere and if so tell us about it hmm. uh, uh, there's, I, th I think the whole the whole journey is is, a, is little blasts of that you know there's never been one big moment for me to be honest with you like there's always this this whole business is is if it was a calendar, every day would be fuck, 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 fuck. Yes, fuck, 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 fuck. You know? <laughs> like every day is it like that's what it's like, you know. Yeah. Um, but those yeses make up for all the other bullshit, you know, by a mile. And 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 really, like that's that's been I think the key to the band's longevity. Like there have been some moments for sure, you know, like that I would never have gotten to do. Like I got to watch. Queens of the Stone Age side stage at a festival in Germany. Like that was dope, man. Like, yeah. uh, like honestly, and it was just a masterclass. You know, we saw Billy Talent, same deal, like 60,000 people. Like they're just like, it's just mosh pit. It's just this vortex, you know, like just being able to see that stuff, mm -hmm. how humans cooperate in these kind of weird ways. And, and, uh, you know, I would drop, have never drop kick Nerf beats Frank Turner and Flogging Molly as well. I think is one yeah, we, we did a little tour of Flogging Molly as well. Um, that was that was pretty cool too. You get to like, you know, it's all little moments within that stuff. You know that that you know I 
I'm not a millionaire. I still rent. I, you know, I, I still have to hustle, but you know, at the end of the day, um, I, I, I feel like I, I made it in music because I got to do things, you know, and it may end tomorrow and that's, that's fine with me. I'll still make my music in, in my bedroom and, and that'll be that. Well, Bro, this is probably some of the best sound bites I've ever heard on any podcast ever. You're amazing, John. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing this with us, brother. I mean that from the bottom of my heart, bro. Thank you. I'm pumped. This is awesome. Thank I, you. I knew, I knew he was going to be a good guest. I had no <laughs> doubts in there. <laughs> uh, I'm reading here that you guys won multiple award winning. Oh, what, 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 what awards did you guys win? I really don't know. Gigs, to be honest with you. Um, gosh, um, we won a few ECMAs, nice. um, a few Museum of Scotia awards. Oh, there was, um, there were, <laughs> so there's a magazine here in Halifax called The Coast. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that thing. Yes. I live in Halifax for a while. I love that. They have a Coast Best of issue. Um, and so they have all these different categories for musicians and stuff, you know, best and listen to quietly and best whatever and best whatever and fuck to etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah exactly right and 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 we got the award for best band to get drunk to for five years in a row and i yeah. vote that every goddamn year too how man. does it feel to be that band though Huck? honestly well you know what honestly that's that's a very good question because you know initially like when you're a band that's just like happy to get a gig and you're like oh shit, Carriage House in Port Hawkesbury, we want to play. And they're like, well, why would we hire you? And we're like, well, we just got voted to be the best band to get drunk to in Halifax, so maybe you'll sell some beer. And then we're like, boom, get a gig, you know? So it was great. Yeah. But, but now you don't want to be put into that box, though, of... Yeah, exactly. Like, you don't want to be put in that box. And, and, and you know, it's, it's sort of like you're mortgaging some of your... I, I don't want to say integrity, because that's, that's a little too rough, but... Um, you, you you are in a sense it, it, mortgaging some of maybe your artistry in some people's quarters, you know, later on down the road. So, um, but you, you got to get there first, right? So, well, when you uh, have songs like "Dirty Is Drunk," right? Exactly. Yeah, maybe, maybe, that's, point. maybe that's a segue. Maybe because we we were like fifty minutes now into it. Maybe I don't know where we're at, but we we never played a song yet. Maybe we get a maybe you get to give a sample to yeah, people that don't know the Stanfields. If they don't well, know the Stanfields, I don't know. The, well, I mean, I, we I gotta say, we've got a we got a listener in Finland. So uh, you know, I, I mean, was thinking about like maybe we should play the first uh, ship to ship to shore and dirtiest drunk. How, How do you about, feel about that, boss? Sounds good to me. Awesome. We'll go, uh, bit, we'll go early and then we'll move into the newer. I, I don't. I don't smoke cigarettes in the studio, so I'm going to take a step outside and uh, maybe we'll give this uh, Zoom thing a, a quick little freshen up. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll end this one and then we'll start a new one. Uh, I'll give you a little quick uh, invite after we come back. How's that sound, John? Sounds good. Awesome. We'll see you back in uh, a couple of minutes here, folks. Stick it around. We're going to listen to some wicked Stanfield tunes right here, right now, on jam sessions. Okay. Hello. Round two. Fight. Let's get, <laughs> let's get this guy in here, shall we? Fight. Copy invitation link. Finish him. Send to John Landry. And then let him in the second he comes in. We're recording over there. We're recording over there. Are you with us, sir? Busy's in the room. Hear me? Yep. yep. Can hear you now. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So I got to ask a question right off the top here. Uh, who's the fucking drunk? Because he's amazing. In the video. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, his, his name was John Walters. And the Stanfields, the first time we ever played in Moncton, we played at this place called Doc Dillon's. And I don't think it's open now. And, uh, and there was this one 
guy just sitting in the table. He was the only person in the audience, and he was fucking losing his mind. He was loving it. <laughs> anyway, we, of course, like, we're just like, thanks, man. Glad you enjoyed the show. Like, of course, you're going to go talk to him and, and shoot the shit. And we got to know him, and, and his name is John Walters. He's from Moncton. And, and, he, and he's kind of like, he was, he, uh, he, he was, struck us as kind of like, this like, like hyperactive Kiefer Sutherland, you know, like, <laughs> like I, I don't know what else to call it, you know. <laughs> and and uh, so we gave him a nickname not long after because everybody gets nicknames from here from fucking Nova Scotia, especially Pickle County. And we called you, you guys have nicknames in the band, don't you? Oh, we got a few. They mostly rhyme with gasshole. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, yeah, John, he ended up being like probably one of our biggest fans and he was he'd come to all our shows everywhere and and so we were shooting this video for the dirtiest drunk and and the director aram kumijan he he asked me you know who could play this character and i suggested john and he was perfect and and we put him through hell like three days of hell uh, and like he just rose the occasion like he he'd fall he'd throw himself downstairs he'd get hit with shit like he just it was just constant and then he like we wrapped on a Sunday night and he just bombed her back to Moncton because he had to work an overnight shift at Moncton Airport. Um, three so, planes might have blown up that night. I don't know. But um, from, a, from a fan's perspective, I, I got to, you know, I, I don't mean to speak for the man, but I think that was probably him paying back the blood, the sweat, the tears, and the passion that you guys pour out on the stage night after night after night that he's taking in. And, you know, being able to throw himself, literally throw himself down the stairs for you guys, I think is probably his way of saying, thanks, boys. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, that, wasn't, that wasn't lost in any of us, that's for sure. I mean, you know, the way he leaned into that uh, was something pretty special. Um, sadly, um, uh, I, was on a, I was on a promotional tour in Germany. Uh, myself and Callan Kinney, who's now the fiddler in the band from uh, Bailey's Brook, mm -hmm. matter of fact, and uh, we were in this town called Saarbrücken, and it's and it's right on the French border. And uh, and we get a phone call. I get a phone call from our manager at the time, and and uh, he told me that John passed away in a in a car accident just That's prior. So. Yeah, so like, there's a real, there's a real story with that guy. There's a real sort of like, he's really embedded in 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 the band's DNA for not just the video, but like, like that dude. Like one time we couldn't cross the ferry, we couldn't cross the Confederation Bridge to go to PEI. He was already there waiting for us because of the the winds, right? So like we had a trailer so that we couldn't cross. So the fucking guy, he, him and his buddy grabbed their rigs and came back across the bridge. Wow. Loaded up all our gear into her two vehicles. He got in the fucking trunk with like amps and shit, like, and got us to the gig. And you know, like this dude was just like just as dedicated as you guys are, obviously, right? Well, you know, it, it's it's stuff like that that, like, honestly, and I was kind of saying this earlier that you know, awards or whatever, like, you know. Comes to the obviously game. money's not going to be a thing this is the stuff right like this is this is the shit this is this is why i get out of bed at noon every day <laughs> <laughs> no i get up really early i'm i'm very old um, i just turned 40 last april brother i feel uh, you're we're all 40s your here yeah, right? that's right yeah we're all 40. hell yeah but you I, know i love it actually this is my uh, no one told me that midlife crisis was going to be so fun I'm I'm okay with it. I'm yeah. perfectly fine with it. I, I, it's just a construct, man. Yes, absolutely. It's just a construct. I'm I'm happier, healthier, and more fit. Uh, my lungs might be a little uh, more raspy just because of <laughs> all the all the smoke and things that I put into them. But uh, I, I'm you know I, I'm happy to be forty, bud. You know what I mean? Me too. Yeah, I, I'm love. My 40s have been super fun. Uh, this podcast is another new thing that we're doing, and it's just uh, I'm enjoying it. I think, and the music scene. I think all of us that were musicians and been bands in the 90s are kind of having a resurgence these days. That's how it feels for me. It's absolutely a resurgence all, of our youth. I've all, said it a million times. All these bands that are going on in the scenes now are people in their 40s usually. 
most of them. Yeah, for sure. So question I had, because uh, we were kind of talking about it, is that you have, don't even want to be considered a drinking band. I can kind of tell from what your answer is. And I today did my homework and listened to a, a lot of Stanfield stuff all day today. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. no. I'm sorry. Thank I'm you, sorry bro. that I didn't listen to it sooner. I should have been listening to some of this stuff way sooner. And you guys should not be put into that box because, uh, wow, man, I'm really impressed with uh, what, seven albums I think you guys have now. Yeah, so, uh, there's a lot of stuff to go through, and uh, me, I'm be I'm a metal guy. I like the hard rock. I like the the gritty stuff, and I guess that's my favorite. St- I wrote down some of my favorite songs, and obviously they're all like uh, ones that are kind of have a little more little bit of distortion in there. A little more to it, yeah. Uh, um, w- but the best song that I heard of all day today, and I was like, oh my god, this is like one of the, my favorite songs. I'm probably gonna go listen to it a whole shitload tomorrow. Is Will the circuit be unbroken? Yeah. Now, that doesn't sound anything like a lot of your other stuff, in my opinion. Yeah. That whole album that's off of, mm-hmm. do, you kind of do you kind of go for a different sound on that album? Because that's like a pretty uh, raw-sounding album. You get, it, gets, it goes off at times. Um, I, I just honestly, like, I, 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 look at, I look at what we do, and, and we look at what we do. You know, like we don't want to be boxed in to anything, you know, like we, we got a little bit of notoriety because of a couple songs and, you know, in this world, people pass judgment really quick because they have busy lives. Like they don't have time to obsess over, you know, a band and their seven albums. Like, you know, they they just don't. So, you know, I, I think that's, that's pretty normal. I'm like that. Like I'm, I'm surprised by stuff I hear all the time. I'm just like, what? That's, that's who, what, you know? Um, but honestly, like every time we make a record, we think about what we're doing in terms of the larger body work in terms of like, almost like, uh, uh, like a, like a long arc serial drama in a way, you know, like, or, or periods, you know, like <clears throat> it's about going where we weren't before. And, and using what's in front of you too. Like I remember when we did circuit and we did the modem op record and, <clears throat> and believe it or not, there's actually a lot of, there's a lot of folk in there. Mm-hmm. Um, like Marystown expedition and stuff. But you know, if, if you change some of the, some of the, the you know, the sonics and stuff, like it, it, it doesn't get that far removed from something like, tool would do in some ways you know what i mean or like stoner rock shit like that like i I love i love exactly what you're saying here because it's what what you're describing is why i love your band um and it kind of leads me into this question of because there are so many different you guys are like a fucking sonic onion you know there's so many layers you know what i mean um songwriting process Let, fill me in on it man how, how yeah. does it even how do you guys even start man i i don't know like honestly I, I what i thought was always pretty cool something i learned growing up i read a lot of guitar magazines you know mm-hmm. kind of thing guitar world guitar we world did, uh, yes. 40 year olds that's what we right. did and i yeah right and i i remember uh i remember James Hetfield and Lars Ulrich, or maybe it was Kirk Hammett. No, I think it was Lars Ulrich. They were getting interviewed and they were talking about Kill Em All, you know? And they were talking about how they would write a title of a song. And then they would say, well, what does this sound like? You know? So I I, I think there's all kinds of different ways to do it. And I always try to do things very different, you know? So sometimes I'll just like, we'll come up with a title. We're like, okay, what's that sound like? Ding, ding, ding. what's in front of us ding 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 you know like we're we're literally a marketing person's nightmare and that's probably why we haven't like gone too much farther than we have because we're just we're kind of scatterbrained that way but it's it's fun you know and honestly like it's for people to find you know it's not for to shove down people's throats so like as soon as you know we got over that pretty quickly and just went well we're just gonna slide out the back door of the pub here and go do something else <laughs> you know what i mean so um 
Well, Jeff, yeah. Jeff said he's seen you guys live a few times. Yeah. And I, I actually haven't. I haven't ever seen you guys live. And I go to, I can't even believe I haven't, to be honest. This is crazy that I haven't, I find. Oh, it's a big world, man. Like, this is exactly the point. It's, it's a big, big world. And, and uh, you know. change soon because uh, whenever the next time you guys have a show, I uh, will be there. Oh, yeah. You, you, you don't know what you're missing, buddy. It'll probably be 2023 before that happens. Oh, my God. I haven't played a show since last March, so I'm just, like, bugging out. When I was looking at the studio stuff today, I kept on having moments where I was like, man, this would sound really good live. About And there's – you guys uh, – what I think about a lot of the Celtic rock bands I, that I find you guys – said that you guys just part a little bit, too, is you have these jammy moments where it gets very instrumental – you can just tell you guys are just jamming out. Free-flowing, just creating in the moment. It's beautiful. Yeah. Try, we're trying yeah. to do that more. I mean, you know, that, 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 that kind of comes with stage time. You know, I, I think. can just tell that would be those type of songs. I'm like, yeah, I can picture them like this being a really good song live where they're just like jamming it right out and just feeling it. So I, I, I got to check it out. Uh, so kind of goes to you guys just put out a live album. Yeah. Want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, um, time and circumstance, man. Fucking COVID. <laughs> Honestly, you know, um, it was it was our last Black Dot Ball, so 2019, and and uh, we we uh, brought in a bunch of gear into the festival. Um, we brought our studio, our, our pretty much our studio engineer guy who we worked with the last ten years, and. It was just an excuse for him to come out and get loaded, really. And <laughs> that spades drinking band, right? <laughs> and uh, anyway, so we captured the audio from the show and um, and and really stored it away. It was just it was just sort of matter of fact, just to do it. Um, then COVID hit. Uh, we lost whole years of worth of touring shows, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, uh, all of a sudden we're just kind of back to okay, so how does a band connect how do you band again how do you well how do you band again right and, and how do you connect with each other how do you connect with your audience that you fucking slave to build for 10 years you know um how, do, how so these kind of questions are in the air and this is like wow okay cool so like we did um you know a few recordings over the year mostly remote recordings and uh one stay the blazes home which is saying we put out last April and raised the money for Fee Nova Scotia, which was probably the coolest thing I've ever got to be a part of, to be honest with you. That was a cool. question I was going to ask you about yes. that song, actually. How did that, how did that come about? Um, well, I mean, <laughs> honestly, it's, it's the most corniest. No, it's not corny. It's just it's funny. It, I guess, like, honestly, because I never thought of it. It was my wife, Shannon. <laughs> so, you know, if you remember back in April, um McNeil would have the conferences every day and everybody would tune in because everybody's on the CERB and whatever, you know, it was just a pastime for a while. And and uh, of course he dropped the hammer with, you know, just stay the blazers home and he kind of laughed and you could tell it was canned and, and, and everything else. But my wife turned to me, you know, this was on a Friday, and she turned to me and she said, you should write a song about that. And then she kind of started making fun of me, right? She's kind of like, nah, 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 he's at home. And I was like, I would laugh and we laughed and that was it. But then, you know, you kind of have one of those like light bulb moments, you know, <laughs> just kind of like, okay, cool. So, so I, I literally wrote it in 20 minutes, such a throwaway song, you know, and, and uh, I, I posted on the kitchen party, the Facebook group. God bless that yeah. lady. For right. You know, like the coolest thing that probably ever happened to, Atlanta Canadian music in a long time, you know, besides this podcast. And, uh, right? you, uh, you, can quote, you, you can put that right on the website, boys. <laughs> there on the website. Um, but, you know, like that thing took off. I put this raw video of me sitting at the kitchen table singing it, and it, it just blew up. And then uh, the radio station here in, in town, uh, in Halifax, Q104, they, they emailed me. They're like, can you send us the audio for that? And I'm like, no, but I'll make you a new one. I wasn't yeah, yeah. That. I'm gonna give you the audio for that. But oh, so we rallied the guys, and within 48 hours, we we multi-tracked the whole thing, uh, each from our own homes, and and uh, made the video all remotely within 48 hours. And it was just like, what a it was a marathon, you know? Like yeah. we didn't sleep for two days, and no we kidding. slammed it out, and. Uh, 
and we raised a pretty good amount of money for Feed Nova Scotia and and uh, yeah, it, that was it, <laughs> you know, really in a nutshell. So it kind of, we learned a lot from that, you know. Learned uh, from that. The geek, yeah, I'm just reading, uh, you, there's an article here in the news about it as, as well, about this. Oh, there's all kinds of info about it. The, premier, it really the premier actually heard the song. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you know he did. Uh, well, he says, I'm reading it, bro. Like the, the premier here read, like actually heard your song. Um, the, uh, the geek in me wants to know, uh, how did you guys multi-track without being in the same room? Because, I mean, there's so many different ways of collaborating and working together. Yeah. Now, so I'm just kind of curious as to how did the Stanfield do it? Well, I mean, we're still doing it. Um, um really i like I, I i have a pro tools account and so i'm building i'm building beds bed tracks this is this is boring nerd talk for, uh yes but i'm uh, a nerd but, uh, you have nerd but hey hey this is us now like just us, just, funny. just us tunnel vision um yeah so i i'd use like uh i'd lay down a bed track in pro tools and send it over to murph our drummer who's uh, from stellaton uh, and, and he'd lay down the drums at his place and send it back and then we'd send it over to the bass player. He'd lay his part down, send it back and yada, yada, yada. Usually I'm mapping things out and as a demo, like I'm doing all the instruments with MIDI or whatever the yeah. fuck, just to, sort yeah. of, just to sort of build the borders, you know, Absolutely. and then we work within that and, and I, I, I pretty much know what everybody's going to do because we've mm -hmm. played together for so long. Absolutely, you know? the chemistry is still there. That you, 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 like you said, you know what somebody else is going to do. Like you, you have the yeah. idea, and they're going to pick it up and roll with it. Exactly, and then you know, at the end of the day, it's just a bit of file management. We're 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 just uploading tracks to Google, and I'm bringing them into the session and and uh, sending it off to our mix guy who lives down in Chester, and <laughs> he mixes it and sends it back, and we never even look at each other. It's fucking glorious <laughs> awesome. don't have to be in a stinking van with these guys don't have to throw up with their shit you know <laughs> it's, it's great. Awesome. Great. but uh and with in that same regard though john do you, do you find that you guys are still able to do the banding and and the, the the camaraderie and the connectivity that we really do love and search out for in the bands that we're in i i, I would think for most of us anyway yeah you know what um yeah that's 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 a good question I, like it's it's just different you know like before covid it was um tour for a month sick of each other don't want to talk to you gotta go back and get into the real world i mean we love each other we're brothers but you know you know what i'm saying it's mm. you know it's quite that simple and and so it's a different it's a different routine you know now the routine's just a bit different we're just we're not really having to sing for a supper these days so you know it's it's more about let's create and let's just try to stretch some different muscles let's try to learn how to produce our own recordings let's get better at that let's get better at making our own videos let's so we decided over the last year is is that um we're going to focus on we probably put out our last record which is the live record that's probably our last album at least for the foreseeable future you know in that regard you mean like more singles and things yeah like that. more singles more more short sprints more like in this world you just fuck you just can't go away like you used to you know what i want to get into is i noticed you did start up a record label is that also your vision for your label too or yeah i mean yeah absolutely i mean you know covid's kind of heard a lot of that right now especially uh, as well but uh, you know this whole year has been a learning process and really just about um giving giving ourselves the permission to, to step up and do something do it a different way you know do it a different way that's what, that's what started this podcast yeah was, well uh, right and and that's exactly the point like like you guys are putting a pod you did 25 podcasts and you took a one week break and then you're on to season two you know yeah. what i mean <laughs> well that's 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 awesome and that's exactly the point like like keep you got to keep connecting with people because this is this is the business that you and i like three of us are in it's 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 making connections with people absolutely you know? yeah, i love the way that you put that john for sure um because you know Mike, well, like mike said the, the reason that this whole thing started is because covid made us not be able to go see our friends in concert and hang out right. like we normally do so we started bringing them to us instead 
Um, and it was all because our premier, again, said, stay the blazes home. So uh, if you're cool with it, I'd like to maybe give our listeners a little bit of that right now. What do you say? Yeah, that old raunchy bit. Sure. <laughs> all right. So uh, here, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, is going to be uh, the best couple minutes of your day. With stay the blazes home. Stay the blazes home, stay the blazes home. Think about the common good, stay the blazes home. If you got the inkling, you want to go to town. Remember, there's a nasty bug going around. This ain't no time to wander, it ain't no time to roam. So listen up, the Stevie boy, stay the blazes home. Stay the blazes home, stay the blazes home. Listen up, the Stevie boy, stay the blazes home. If you got the hangman, to go and get your fix, to party with your buddies, and drink a beer or six. Have at your kitchen parties, but do it over the phone. Listen up to Dr. Strang, stay the blazes home. Well, stay the blazes home, stay the blazes home. Listen up to Dr. Strang, stay the blazes home. Yeah, you read an article you found upon the net that told you something different than our government. It ain't no propaganda, and you might whine and moan. Think about the common good, stay the blazes home. Now, stay the blazes home, stay the blazes home. Think about the common good, stay the blazes home. Stay the blazes home, stay the blazes home. Think about the common good, stay the blazes home. There we Whoa, go, man. ladies and gentlemen. Stay the blazes home. Oh man, this is that, I love it. Uh, Just a goof off, you know. Like, like honestly, like when all this started going down, like I found it was one of these cases of going the other way, you know. Um, we just uh, like everything had been so like serious for a very long time when everything was kind of normal, and and we were trying to take up be in that space, you know, being serious and kind of trying to take on more socio-political issues and, and, and things of this nature. And, and, uh, you know, I think the penny just kind of dropped and, and I was in my house for six weeks straight. I didn't even go out in the hallway of my apartment. Like I forgot how to use my debit card when I finally went out. Like, it. so we were just kind of just said, you know what, like, let's just try to make people laugh. You know, that was, that was the thing. Like that is, Really, that's all they needed, man, because everybody's sitting around scared shitless. The best thing to do is laugh in these situations when, you know, you got... You, you or you're going to cry, you know? Exactly, brother. It's either one or the other, so you might as well choose, you know, to giggle. Well, thank you for that, because, you know, there's a lot of people that chose to go a different route with all this, and we're going negatively and posting negative stuff and getting all into the conspiracies and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then there's people like us starting up podcasts, trying to show positivity and trying to still give make connectivity. Show that yeah, like that in we such need a stuff like this. World, you know, you know, because it's just there's been so much negative you see, or, and it's nice to have something refreshing like that. Because I'm on your side, man. I think that's what we need more of. We need people that to, to take uh, uh, something bad and and use it as like okay how can I adapt and and change and be creative from this I think what Mike's trying to say John is thanks to Stan Fields yeah just thank you in a, in a big long way <laughs> you know I, I never thought that I would ever sing a song to say to listen to the government I, I had to choke the, those words out for sure yeah, but, uh, I bet and a big shot of whiskey <laughs> well you know honestly but you know it just it just had to happen just it just had to happen and, and we did it and you know the rest of the year was like that we did a yacht rock song after that and just like we did an 80s song after that because it was just like fuck it you know like there are no rules right now like yeah. we were told that that uh, you have to make your living touring and and that you have to do things a certain way and that's the industry standard and yada 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 well 
fucking guess what? It, you know, a pandemic blew a hole in that theory and they just all stand there as touring musicians and going like, yeah, okay, so that was wrong. So we're going to just try to reinvent how we do things. And I'm quite excited, to be honest with you, like 2021 and beyond. Like, I got a good 25 years left in the tank. Yo, I'll make it. I'm done. You know, I uh, something I, I see on my list here that we haven't really talked about too much, but I'd like to talk about is uh, the blacktop ball. Yeah. Um, how long has that been going? How did it get started? <laughs> Holy fuck! Uh, there's two answers. answers. I, I heard a story about the beginning of this, and I just want to hear the real story. <laughs> yeah, let's get it from the horse's mouth. <laughs> uh, yeah, then you have to promise to tell me the story that you've heard because it's on one of our podcasts, actually. So who told us that? Was that maybe even Scott the Coast? Probably. I do believe it was Scott the Coast. Yeah. Something. It was like it, it's something that was just like a party on your deck mm -hmm. that grew into something huge. Which is inspired. Yeah, more, more it's, kind of, it's kind of what I've been doing three years or two, whatever. My 40th birthday, I threw a big party, and then every year it's been kind of getting, getting bigger. a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. And so you have three 40th birthdays. Yeah, basically, what's happened. <laughs> or so two or three, or whatever. <laughs> I had green jello come for one of them. Five. Oh, that's sick. No way. All the way from <laughs> California, baby. I, so I get to say now that my band opened for green jello, dude. Yeah, so. Oh, shit. So it's growing too, but I mean, that sounds like how, what was, is that what basically the true story? You had like a deck party that just grew into like this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I, I worked in asphalt, you know, for many years um, between tours and, and everything else. And, and uh, one of the guys I worked for, he named Orville Mason and he, and he uh, has a cottage down in Lismore area. Okay. And he was like, our first year as a band, he was like, so yeah, you guys got to come down and play my party. You have to. I'm going to have a party. You're going to play on my deck. Sounds like something and, I would do. Yeah, and, and we did. And he, he's like, I'll, I'll pay you a thousand bucks. We're like, a fucking oh. thousand bucks. Oh, I okay. underpaid for all, I guess. We, 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 <laughs> we're going to have to have a little chat about that, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, we, so so we went down and played the gig. Brought in a little PA and fuck, there was probably 25 people there you know honestly uh and we but we had such a good time horrible you know he's family friend anyway he's like he said i don't care how big you get we're doing this every year we didn't tell our management about it or anything we just did it you know we're just like fuck this and, and so we did it the next year and the next year there was probably 55 60 75 people and Orville built the deck a little bit bigger and <laughs> a little drunker and we partied and fuck it was fucking crazy so the third year it was when we just about when we put out our first record and things were kind of taken off and 800 fucking people showed up to this wow party. wow and holy shit, shit dude oh it was insane we're just like holy crap okay with it, oh, maybe to answer your lady's question there earlier, I think that might have been one of the times. So I just went, Whoa, like, what the fuck is going on here? Um, so yeah, this happens, and we're still playing on the deck of his cottage. <laughs> year four, we took a year off after one year. Um, uh, for what, oh, yeah, we were away. Um, but then we came back and we we're like, Well, shit, you know what? Like, um, we should start putting a ticket price on this. So we did, and um, so we started selling tickets, and then when we showed up to play the gig, all of a sudden, Orville had this fucking stage built in the middle of this field on his property, and man, like a 50-year hurricane couldn't blow that thing down. Like, it's... <laughs> Old man it's, built, right? It's, oh my God, it, it, it's it's sturdy, and it's, it's very iconic, and it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, stage, and... So like Black Top Ball was born. We put in, we slammed a name to it, and Black Top is a is a is another name for asphalt. Oh yeah, it's, it's one of our songs too, Black Top Blues, and so we called Black Top Ball, and and uh, we've had loads of artists come in every year. Um, name song. Uh, oh Jesus, um, Christ! We have about nine or ten every year. Uh, I have to say. Um, yeah, let's see. I don't know. Maybe You're finding any Pector County ones, like any. Yeah, there were there have been a few. Um, I'm just trying to think. Nikki, Nikki, uh, Nikki Vino, 
this yeah. is off the top of my head here. Um, yeah. We were supposed uh, 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 East River Rats were supposed to play last year. Yeah. Oh shit! Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that I was disappointed that we couldn't. That couldn't happen, man. I I, I really dig the dude's writing. Yeah. A lot of them. You guys, yeah. like a lot of them. Be they, good they were for sure. They were guests on our show as well. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Eli's in that band too, right? He is. Yes. Eli. He's, in, he's, a, he's in that in Bon Solid, right? Yeah. Other Bon. Mike Hill. Yeah. Hulk yeah. Um. Jeez. Yeah. We've we've had. A, I mean, we've had uh, Pistol Pack and Papas. Um, nice. And. Uh, Gosh, um, lot loads of bands. Mo you know, a lot from a lot from right across Nova Scotia. Like we've had the Town Heroes, we've had uh, Hillsburn, we've had uh, Jamila. It's like a reggae act, fucking real cool. Like you know, genre doesn't really matter. You yeah, know, I've got an idea for you. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, uh, it's these guys right right there. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> on the list and i uh, we may combine forces some near me and you as well i kind of like what i'm doing is what you i'm just a few years behind you but uh that's what i'm doing these days too is uh started with a 40th birthday party and now every year it's getting bigger and bigger yeah i get big plans like th it's, this year there was we had parking and tent food and truck a food truck food and, yeah. uh, and emt and like it was like legit like i and like porta potties and shit like it was it was like a little tiny festival and that's why I, i'm glad to have you as on gas because i uh kind of maybe uh in a way you're inspiring for me because uh some of the things that you're doing is some of the things i want to do I, i've always kind of wanted to do a record label but i don't know if i'd be ready for doing something like that but I, i'm all about promoting mm -hmm. local talent and that's what inspired this podcast and that's what inspires mm -hmm. these parties it seems like that's what you like to do you like you the, you there's a lot of fucking talented people in this province yeah there really is there really is and and not all of them get the opportunities either that that no. some that that even that i've had you know i i, I see that and recognize that and know that and i'm glad uh, that you with your success you're 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 um trying to help others around here yeah and with that being said john why don't you uh maybe give our listeners uh you, you know three or five names that you think that uh, we should all be checking out that maybe we haven't heard of yet? Oh boy. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of feeling on the spot here. I'm sorry. Who <laughs> is <laughs> on your radar for your label? You already have a yeah, couple that's a great question, right? right now. Well, you know what? I, the truth of the matter is I, I, I don't listen to as much music as, as I used to. Um, I find myself making yeah. more music, you know, yeah. and, and, and usually what that means is, is like when you're a touring band, you don't go to bars when you're off, when you're, when you're, when you're making records, you're not really listening to music so much because you give your ears a break and, and things like this. I, I, I'm working with a girl right now. Her name's Laura Ray. And, uh, mm -hmm. she does this really cool, like elegant, um, Carol King pop kind of thing. And, you know, it's an awful lot of fun, like Agnes Obel, and 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 I'm having a lot of fun with that. I, I'm starting another project with a band called Kilmore. I think they've played down there, um, uh, maybe at the spot or something. Um, they they kind of do this sort of Pearl Jam meets Tool sort of kind of vibe, and Wicked. they're a really cool band. Um, Hatchet Lake is another cool band. Um, that I've heard of them, yeah. Yeah, uh, Hatchet Lake is. Uh, I'm trying to get you. Uh, the, I'm writing this down. These are potential <laughs> fucking guests for our show. Here. This so is uh, episode keep... <laughs> one of season two. We well, yeah, you know, you the, the bass player in Hatchet Lake is from Stellarton, actually. Awesome. Um, yeah, uh, Steve, so McDonald, Steve McDonald, Mick. Yep. So yeah. as you can see, like we can put out episodes every Friday, like we have been, because there's so much talent around here. Yeah, uh, and I mean, well, like, go ahead, John. No, I was just saying, indeed, like, like. You did 25 episodes and you probably haven't talked to Lowell Campbell, you know, like you probably have, you know, people like this, like they're, they're so my friends first and now we're, we're starting to expand outward, you know? Yeah. Or like, what about uh, Turk? Do you talk to Mike McNeil? Uh, Turk's on the list. Man, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, like these, like it's, it's I'm crazy. Good, how much good friends, you know, yeah. Murray's done sound for a bunch of my parodies. Murray McGaugh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All the stuff that you're talking, yeah, it's all gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> you guys are gonna be doing this for like a hundred years. Like, <laughs> I know. I really hope so, um, man. It's uh, next to my kids, John. It's the best thing I ever made. I love it. It's fantastic. 
Yeah. And uh, thanks, thanks for coming on. Uh, I think we should play another song. Maybe. Absolutely. Why don't we uh, ask Mr. Uh, well, why don't we, I, I'd like to play uh, Hard Miles, maybe. That's the one we had on, uh, next on the list. Yeah. Uh, if you're all right with that, uh, sure. I'll maybe uh, lay it in on the audio mm -hmm. track later on. But uh, let's maybe jump to a song, uh, John, that you want to hear. What, what's your... Of, of any song that I could find of your guys' is on Apple Music or Spotify or YouTube or wherever. Of our songs? Yeah. What's your, what's, if you were stuck on a desert island and had to hear one of your songs <laughs> for the rest of your life, which song would you choose? Um, go to YouTube and, and type in Stanfield's Christmas Death Train. Oh, I love it. Death, death is spelled D E F, D E F, D E T H. Oh, like Mega Death. Yeah. This is probably the deepest cut we've ever put out. There's like seven views. Nobody liked it. It's a Christmas song. Christmas Death Train? Yeah. All one word, Death Train? Uh, maybe it's like Xmas Death Train. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Xmas Death Train, a minute and 40 seconds. Did you find it? Yeah, we found it. Yeah, okay. 884 cool. views. Let's probably uh, like new favorite song. Let's get this on. Uh, so we're a little late from the uh, from the Christmas jams. But, yeah, uh, we'll uh, here. Wait, I'll I'll I'll, I'll get the I'll, I'll make the mood just right here, and, and we'll put the Christmas hat on. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, there we go. Nice. And, then we'll, and then we'll play play this one real quick, like. Christmas is all about. Mike, please. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. For behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, it shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. <laughs> Christmas is all about Charlie Brown. Listen close. <laughs> Unbelievable. Dude. You know what? That's amazing. And see, again, ladies and gentlemen, another sonic layer that is the sound that, onion. Proves <laughs> that you were you were influenced by my old band, the lesbians. <laughs> That's been on the kill flow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, I got I actually I actually got to you know what? And and I, I did see Spur a few times too. Uh, 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 and that's Dennis's band, right? And Paul Paul Shaw was in, in that band too. And, yeah. And and was, it was like the only guy, Chad, what was, what was the drummer's name? Chad, um, Chad, Chad Mitchell. Mitchell. And, Chad uh, Mitchell was the, I think he was the only guy in Pictou County who could do blast beats, right? <laughs> On time, anyway. Yeah, it was sick, man. Like, that was, that was like fucking sick shit. You know what's weird, yeah. man, Chad? I don't, this is out of the blue, but I'm just going to throw it out there anyway. Chad messaged me today and told me that he's got a new project that's coming out very soon with, with the singer from Hate Division, Sean. And... It's coming out very soon. Ooh. Sean just put out something else too. Uh, anyway, it's going to be really heavy. Does that mean that we're going to actually get those motherfuckers on the show? Probably. Oh, yeah, season two is so lit. I already said it was going to be. <laughs> and it was all done over the internet too, as well. Like Chad's, they're they're not even in the same province making music together, so it's pretty cool. No kidding. But that was awesome, John. Thank you for showing us that song. I don't think I ever came across. I was looking through all kinds of stuff today, and I didn't come across that. And I know how to find stuff. So we were just uh, we were actually doing pre-production for Moda Mop, uh, the one with uh, Circuit Will the Circuit Be Unbroken, and and it was coming up to Christmas, and had this conversation about Vince Coleman, Dispatcher. Um, do you remember those? Do you remember those Canada Heritage commercials? And, yeah. You know, he was just like. 
that he's trying to stop the train at <laughs> Christmas time. And so that's, it's as Nova Scotian as fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hardcore East Coast for sure. Ah, oh, that was bomb, man. Oh, man. This, this has been great, man. You're not kidding, uh, Mike. I'm starting to get a little bit of buzz on, too. I'm drinking these twisted teas. Well, good thing you don't have to drive home. This guy's my neighbor yeah, now. So, yeah, that's a new thing that's for cool. us uh, and our listeners. Jeff is now my neighbor. That's awesome. I will, yeah, he's like, I can look out this I'm window and see my place. I'm 100 Jeff steps from my door to his. This wasn't <laughs> season one. He used to have to drive really far to my place, and we did it at my place, and it was like big set up and i just walked over here and sat down and everything was ready to go except for you get stuck on a call well you know you work from home it sometimes happens right it's been the part of the season too how easy it is like i can i don't have to worry about driving i'm just gonna stagger my way home <laughs> yeah. the dirtiest drunk sits right beside it's, me it's my hundred it's actually you you're the dirtiest drunk mike <laughs> it is actually like you're the dirtiest drunk, bud. There we go. Right, dirtiest so, drunk uh, in the street, anyway. Right. So, <laughs> do you uh, do you have any other questions for this fine young man? Well, um, I want to know. So, who's the current members of the Stanfields right yes. now? Do you want to give names, them a shout out? Let's do some name drops here, John. Yeah. So, there's myself, um, of course, and uh, Mark Murphy. He's been in a band with me for almost 20 years now, and and founding member of the Stanfields on the drums. Uh, Dylan Tate from Monastery, Nova Scotia, on the bass. Uh, he joined five years ago. Uh, Callan Kinney from Bailey's Brook, out in West Picto, or East Picto, I should say. Uh, he's on the fiddle and mandolin and keys, and and uh, he does a strip of gram from time to time. It's kind of awkward, but <laughs> girls, girls like it. You gotta make money somehow. Um, <laughs> and and uh, Jason McIsaac, another founding member. Uh, he's from uh, Dunvegan, which is in the Inverness area in Cape Breton. So it says you guys are a Halifax band and nobody's from Halifax. Yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> listen, listen, we'll be wherever the fuck pays the bills, to be honest. Yeah. With you. Like, when I'm talking to Ann McGregor on the radio, she's like, our Pecto County's own Stanfields. I'm like, fucking right. Yep. We're from exactly. Yeah. So that's why you're on the Nova Scotia band, man. I, don't even, I actually shouldn't say Halifax, Nova Scotia. And I should just say Nova Scotia because that's the, that's the truth of the matter. I, I spent a lot of great years in Pictou County, but you know, I'm I'm sort of a I'm sort of a transient, and so I, I'm a man without a hometown in a, in a weird sort of way. That's huh. how I kind of feel. But I, you know, I've You're watched. You're Scotian, though. You can say that. Yeah, you don't feel like an interloper. No, hell, hell, no. Like, no. I, Jesus, man, yeah. I, I've I've been on every fucking back road and legion in this province. So you know, honestly, like, well, yeah. You're a Nova Scotian boy through and through for sure. Yeah, That's no. Awesome. Uh, Wicked. So, uh, go ahead, Mikey. Well, I was going to say, uh, any influences for when you started creating this music? Like, what other bands maybe you were listening to at that time when this start, all started began in 2008? Other than the obvious ones, of course. Yeah. Ones that might. Yeah. Well, you know what? Like, I, I think when, you know, Dropkick Murphys and stuff like that wasn't really on our radar, to be honest with you. Like, it no. was like we played like, we played like alt rock music and you know that kind of stuff, but but really like what it was instead of discovering stuff, it was about coming back to stuff. Mm -hmm. So you know, I was I was about twenty six, twenty seven, and I was doing a lot of road work in construction. So I spent a lot of time in the country, and I kind of reconnected with the music I heard as a kid, like John Prine and Hank Williams and mm -hmm. and and stuff like that. And and I always loved Neil Young. Neil Young's like my favorite guitar player in the You're world. You're here, buddy. You know? He, right he taught me how to sing high yeah right and and there's just something about that so so really it was just about we just wanted to um we just wanted to play folk music as loud and as fast as we could and honestly i don't think you'll ever see on record of any of us ever saying that we're a punk band or a celtic punk band or anything like that because that's just i don't know it's kind of uniform to me and and uh, you know it's it's cool and 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 all that and and you know Flog and Molly's an awesome band and Dropkicks are an awesome band we played with them both they're awesome dudes and you know we just don't really see ourselves as part of any of that really it's you kind of go into each album as well now you're not doing albums anymore but your previous albums for now 
<laughs> as like you wanted a certain sound for that album though because i find each album has its own sound yeah and i think you know it's it's, it's like we've somebody's bought a new piece of gear you know this is what we've written at the time you know i i think one of our one of the bands that we're trying to really like um mimic in terms of the scatter brain kind of approaches honestly it's queen you know hmm. like queen to me is like one of my favorite bands and i fucking love queen like and and like this band will play bicycle bicycle you know and then they'll play stone cold crazy and then they'll play fucking bohemian rhapsody and they'll just be all over the map and it's just like it doesn't make sense but it fucking makes sense you yeah. know sense absolutely you know so like it's just it that's the archetype you know like we're not going to try to sound like we you know, we can't in a million years but like you know the freedom of the way that they created the, the way that the beatles created after they stopped touring you know like the shit like they did like it's 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 inspiring in that sense to be able to just be like yeah we're just gonna do we're gonna play what we want you know honestly and and hope people like it and hope people get it and but you know i'm comfortable in the fact of knowing that not everybody's gonna like it at all times you can't be everything to everyone you know so you just gotta be true to yourself do what makes you happy and if you're doing what makes you happy that's what's gonna make people respond ultimately in the end of the day that's been my experience well, I guess the best way to approach that's it beautiful brother holy shit I, i'm telling you the sound bites with this guy are just like epic <laughs> <All efficient. laughs> that, 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 that's the truth right there you've been, you've been a great guest uh, this is a great way to start off season two jesus you're not kidding um, not religious, <laughs> here i am jesus <laughs> praying to the, praying to the good Scotian boy right, <laughs> no, right. right. so uh ladies and gentlemen i think we're coming uh to the near end we're gonna edit some some songs in here, and we're gonna have a nice, awesome version coming out here tomorrow, four twenty. That's right. It's assuming that I can get it done in time. So uh, yeah, no. If we're a little late on episode one on season, we two, took a little bit longer happen. break than maybe we should have. <laughs> no way! I, I was getting burnt out. I had just enough perfect amount of break. I am ready, baby. I am back. We we're staying places home. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I mean, hey, why not when you can do all this cool shit from the living room, right? Yes, John. Just this has been awesome. It's been great. I am now a huge Stanfields fan. Um, listening to all the music today, I always have been, brother. Thank uh, you so much. I should have many been. years of I, amazing stuff. Keep it up, man, and uh, everybody out there that keeps listening to this podcast. I love you all. Yeah, keep it up, guys. It's this has been a fucking blast. Thanks, pal. Awesome. Uh, tune in on Friday next week when we have another guest. Question mark. Yes. Uh, <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, guys, again, thank you so very much for tuning in. Uh, video version of this uh, podcast is going to be available on Patreon. Check it out, please, and thank you, and consider becoming a patron uh, if this is the first time that you've heard this show. We have 25 episodes that you can uh, get caught up on and listen and tune in and find out all kinds of cool stuff about Picto County artists and abroad. And abroad. This is Jeff. And this is Mike. And this is Jam Sessions. Thanks for tuning in. Love you all. And we're out. So I'm going to stop recording here in Zoom.